Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Osasa Show. The topic of discussion remains the same as last week, the security situation in Nigeria. Our guest today is the former army spokesperson, Brigadier General Sani Usman, who will be speaking to us about his perspective of the renewal, or I should say, the uh, resumption of new service chiefs, as well as the current situation of security in our nation. Don't go anywhere, it promises to be a very enlightening episode. Welcome back to the program. As I said, joining me now is former Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sani Usman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Osasa Show. It is a pleasure having me on your program. Thank you so much for coming. Let's start with the resignation of the service chiefs and their replacement. Many times Nigerians focus on just this four apparatuses of the security agencies, while in reality we have over 27 that is in charge of taking care of the lives and the properties of everyday Nigerians. Can we talk about what your perspective is on the effects of the um, change of the service chiefs? Do you believe this will restore or security do you believe this will now enact you know safety and protection for the lives and properties of everyday Nigerians giving the abysmal state of our current security situation in the nation yeah first and foremost um, let's uh, start from the basis you know addressing the issue of uh, the circumstances where we tend to focus more on the military and the reason is simple uh, over time, you know, we have allowed security challenges to, uh, you know, escalate to the situation where they are, to the point where security agencies are being deployed to the point, really, some of them are being overwhelmed to, you know, call in the military. And uh, invariably, we have uh, military, you know, performing internal security duties in almost all every parts of the Federation, almost all the, the states of the country. Therefore, it is not um, surprising that uh, members of the public and everybody too being concerned about security situation focus more attention on the military. And uh, however, and unfortunately over time, there seems to be politicization of security issues in the country to the point of the circumstances we found ourselves. Now, coming back to what, um, uh, to what you were saying, uh, there is uh, a really uh, very good hope. And first and foremost, I would like to thank, you know, uh, the uh, former or as well service chiefs for the services rendered because they have done creditably well over the last five or so years they have been in the hands of our peers because uh, if you look at the circumstances we were in in around 2015 uh, you know and uh, what we have now at least they have tried and now also I would like to congratulate the newly you know appointed service chiefs and uh, to answer your question, I would like to say that um, given their antecedents, they are the right material for the right job. I am sure they are going to consolidate because they are well experienced. Some of them had the benefit of even commanding uh, some of these uh, troops in the uh, tech, for instance, even if we are going to start with the chief of defense staff, he was at one point, you know, uh, a theater commander operation like Chia Dole and he did very well and uh, he on the basis of that he moved to multinational joint tax force apart from being the uh, first commander of multinational joint tax force which is called uh, co which, comp which is uh, composed of uh, you know armed forces of the countries you know bordering like Chad take uh, for instance Chad uh, Niger Cameroon and Nigeria and uh, they were, you know, doing very well fighting terrorism and insurgency. Now, 
uh, he also became the chief of training and operations of uh, the defense headquarters. You know, overseeing the training and operations of the armed forces of Nigeria. So you couldn't have think of a better experience and well qualified person to be the chief of defense staff. And if you look at the chief of army staff too, uh, he had at one point been um, a brigade commander, he had been a general officer commanding 82 division, and he has also been the, uh, you know, uh, theater commander operation life here at Dole. And uh, his last appointment being the deputy commander of the training and doctrine command. And by the way, the essence of military is issue of the training and doctrine. And of course, the CDS was a uh, uh, the commander of that uh, establishment. Now, if you look at the chief of naval staff too, he has paid his dues in various uh, appointments in the Navy, training, uh, staff and command responsibilities. The same thing uh, with the chief of air staff. So, invariably, like I mentioned, that command, uh, all of them are eminently qualified and uh, they have been in the system, they have understudied, you know, those uh, that they took over from and they i would like to say that command is a style any uh, each and in every one of them has a better understanding of what he or she uh, what he intends to do you know to achieve because mindful of the fact that there is high expectation on them to deliver and uh, that expectation will only be met on the basis of or rather it's contingent on two things mm. the level of government support and the level of public support and i'm so sure they will crave for both to ensure that um, you know they make a difference mm. let's let's break that down the level of public support and the level of government support the public is skeptical and rightfully so Despite the impressive track record that you have reeled out of the incumbent service chiefs, Nigerians have heard from since time immemorial, uh, we're going to fix the security situation, we're going to fix the security situation, yet thousands of people keep on getting killed, keep on getting kidnapped, keep on being put in harm's way because of the poorest security situation in Nigeria. So how then can you convince Nigerians to lend their support to these new service chiefs when they've been hearing the same rhetoric from the government, from the service chiefs, from the other security apparatus for so long? Yeah, um, I, is, uh, I can understand rightfully indignations and uh, expectation of every Nigerian because um, we feel it on a daily basis and we know what is going on. But what I'm trying to make you understand is that, um, uh, you know, a tree doesn't make a forest. Therefore, uh, the military is just one component of the Nigerian security architecture. And whenever you are having security situations, other components are supposed to also play a particular role. And um, these components, over time, we have neglected them. Take, for instance, I would like to start with the Nigerian police force, for example. Uh, between 1999 to date, uh, what is the level of support to the Nigerian police force in terms of recruitment, in terms of training, in terms of administration and equipment? Uh, it is dismal. So, so these are some of the issues. That is one. Secondly, to what extent have we invested in the welfare of the people over the last 20 years? To the extent that an average Nigerian may not be tempted to feel, you know, alienated and is given sense of belonging by the government, by the society, that he will not be thinking of uh, crime or at least he will have certain civic obligation that if he sees or hears something, he will realize that actually security is a collective responsibility. Now, we have neglected some of this, especially the local government system. Now, almost, almost everybody uh, is moving to the cities. Why? Because those tiers of the government that are supposed to be buffer, providing, you know, uh, maybe employment opportunities, but certain services that you don't need to resort to the state or the federal government have not been done. So when you think of those and the level of investment into our security architecture over time, you'll understand that whatever success we expect from the security forces, particularly the military, is contingent upon those facts. Now, the average Nigerian, when you look at him or her, to what extent is he security conscious? 
Possibly, you may not think it is lack of education, but it's the lack of sense of belonging that over time we have not, you know, imbibed among ourselves. Due to the abysmal failure of our security agencies, Nigeria now need to awaken their consciousness to ensure that they are no longer resulting to crime and other forms of criminality. Because the question was, why should Nigerians believe? Why should they lend their support to yeah, this? Yeah, I'm, crop I'm, I'm coming to that. Actually, I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm, I'm not saying so that people should resort to help, self help. I'm just praising the history, I mean, the circumstances that brought us to where we are now. And mark you, I also said Nigerians have every right to feel the way they feel, you know, the sense of distinction and disillusionment. Now, we are coming to. Uh, the, the situation where the Nigerian people should have trust and confidence in the security agencies. Why? Well, I am answering the question why now. Okay. Now, when you look at it now, for instance, we have uh, a new set of service chiefs who I'm sure, I mentioned command is a style, they will come up with their own various strategies. I think one of them has just uh, unveiled his vision for the services for the services leader. So eventually, they are coming up with strategies and those strategies will improve on what we have had before. Because they have been in the system, therefore they know some of the areas that need to be improved on. Therefore, they need the support, they need the understanding for them to consolidate on that and give out the desired, you know, uh, security, improved security situation. And given their antecedents, I have no doubt they will do that. But I also mentioned that these successes that we yearn for are contingent on the fact that the government has to do more and the people have to do more. But to a large extent, it is the government that leads the way. Let's talk but, about that. Government. Most times when we look at the head of these security apparatuses, it's very hard to point at the IG of police and say, you are not providing enough for your men to do well. Or I go to, um, I'm a woman. I'm walking on the street at night or I'm driving somewhere at night and I'm stopped by a policeman and I'm being harassed. Or I'm a young man with dreads and a laptop or a smartphone and I'm being harassed. So we've talked about the solution to that is more training, more enlightenment for, the, enlightenment for these police officers. But how much is really being appropriated in their budgets to carry out these trainings? Is government producing or creating, I beg your pardon, a conducive environment for these police officers to carry out their jobs? Are they providing them with the bullets necessary? Are they providing them with the guns necessary? Are they providing them with adequate salaries? Are they providing them with the trainings? So what does government need to do to create a conducive environment for these security officers, whether they be in the military, whether they be in the police force, in the federal road safety, Safety Corps, whatever it is, what can government do to provide a more conducive environment for them to carry out their jobs and implement strategies that will see to the uh, curtailing of insecurity across the nation? Yeah, great. Uh, government has to do a lot, a lot of things. Why? Because um, it is there for the people and they are holding, uh, you know, everything in trust on behalf of the people. Therefore, uh, First and foremost, uh, in the military, for instance, I know that the best welfare form to a soldier is training. And um, it is not just about training, you, you know, the man behind the machine is a human being, has the responsibilities, so you have to take care of his welfare too. Then we should talk about, you know, equipping and kitting also. It's sometimes appalling to see how some of our security agencies are dressed. You you like to see somebody that is well kept and all the rest of it. It it, it is it doesn't go well with a system whereby an individual had to go and buy a uniform or has to buy shoes. You know, and how do you expect such person to you know feel comfortable to serve you better as a policeman as wherever security agencies that person represents? So invariably. We should be thinking of the welfare training, equipping, and even going back to the basis of the recruitment system. That is, in and do interference with the recruitment system of uh, the security agencies. We tend to sacrifice the ability to serve with willingness to serve. You know, sometimes 
You see people that, if I hear the most stubborn person in the family, please let him join the... <laughs> you understand? No. We should also create an enabling environment for our youth to be well-educated, to have things doing. The policemen, the road safety commission people that are not being provided with the kids that they need to excel, what would be your advice to them? Do you advise them to stay put and hope for the best? Or do you advise them, if you're not provided with the tools to enable you carry your duties, you need to back off and, you know, let the government do what it needs to do to be able to provide uh, security to its people? What would your advice be to the people at the forefront of this fight against criminality and insurgency? Well, first and foremost, uh, before the advice, I must commend them for doing what they are doing for the benefit of the Nigerian society. It is not easy uh, being a security person, be it either a policeman, paramilitary, or even the military itself. Because um, so sometimes uh, you even pay the sovereign price, and we cannot put a value to human life. So if anybody decides to join the military or the police, knowing fully well the implications of some of these things, I think he or she should be encouraged to continue to endure, to be more disciplined. And I'm so sure uh, each of the services or the security agencies have their own you know, keating system and procurement system. What they need to improve is the communication system. Take for instance, if I have maybe 30 pairs of shoes, I mean boots, and I have more than that number, I should be able to explain why we have 30, and I should be able to tell the remaining number when we may be able to have. And remember that this is a democratic system of government, that the procurement system takes time, bureaucracy is involved. And if we keep on explaining, I think there will be more understanding and they will give us the very best they could. And again, when you are a commander, Punishment is the last thing you will think of your subordinate. You are supposed to be the parent, you are supposed to be the brother, you are supposed to be the friend. At the same time, you are firm, you know. So with this, it will give the average soldier a sense of belonging to do more. And I am putting this side by side by the fact that some of the criminals that we are dealing with, they are not better equipped. And I gave an example some time ago, particularly, you know, the Boko Haram terrorists. They are not well equipped. You hardly see any one of them with correct pair of shoes, but from sleepers that you buy, how much? Mm -hmm. That one leg is either yellow and the other one is blue, and sometimes tied with rag. Mm -hmm. If that person can do, uh, you know, can remain so determined, what more of you who is having at the back of your mind, your country, your nation, the good people of Nigeria, and your family? So, mm. they, so they need all this encouragement, they need all the support, they need all the understanding to enable them, you know, succeed. It is not just about material things sometimes, it is about our attitude. So I can't remember, you know, where Boko Haram has procured these sophisticated weapons. How do they come about getting their weapons right from the beginning of the insurgency mm. up to this moment? Remember, now we tend to forget so easily in one of our neighboring countries, they don't even have opposition. You are either in government or you are a rebel. And when you are a rebel, definitely where were their camps? They were at the fringes of Lake Chad Basin within the Nigerian territory. We neglected that. And over time, there were complex situations in some parts of African countries where there were movement of arms and ammunition you know, towards Nigeria, towards those rebels. So it's reached a point, especially in the Northeast, I know of Maiduguri, that it becomes fashionable for you to have an AK-47. It is uh, that that the Boko Haram terrorists mopped off and armed themselves. Mm -hmm. And over time, you know, given the kind of situation we have had, there were instances where they ransacked military, you know, formations and mm -hmm. units. Yeah. And in fact, sometimes I felt bad when we recover arms and ammunition from the Boko Haram terrorists, you realize they belong to either of the security forces. Mm. So, and then, secondly, I don't think they import their needs. Therefore, they get them within the country. So how do they get them? This is the question you should ask. 
somebody somewhere is benefiting and is supplying them those. So we have to recognize and we have to get information about you know their supply base and go after it and nip it in the bud, isolate it and make sure that they are destroyed and of course taking out the terrorists themselves. Mm. So these are issues that we have to look at. Sometimes people will just say things but in real sense of the word, it is not true. And I had been the director uh, for almost uh, four years or thereabout, and I know how I was able to manage myriads of information that comes up. And Boko Haram state managed videos, and uh, you know, sometimes address even the director and public relations director. Mm. Boko Haram does not have more sophisticated weapons than the Nigerian military. Is that what you're saying on Absolutely, today's program? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And I can give you an example. Okay. They don't have the benefit of air power, but we have. We have the benefit of air power. They don't have. So, on the basis of that, and you look at the caliber of the weapons, they have. What are the caliber? of the weapons they have, vis-a-vis -vis what the Nigerian military has. So why is it that despite our own and, uh, more sophisticated weapons, Boko Haram is still killing people uh, on such a frequent basis in Nigeria? Now, now you, you look at the issue of terrorism and insurgency, and um, you know the tactics involved. They are so determined to execute their agenda, so they are not following any conventional thing. And you know it's a new phenomenon and we have to give it to our security agencies and the military in particular, you know, for rising up to the occasion because the military is trained for conventional warfare. Now you are faced with an unconventional enemy that lives side by side with the population and you are trying to avoid collateral damages, you know, concern for human rights and the lives of other Nigerians. So these are some of the issues that come into play. That's a fine place to leave it. Brigada General Sani is man, former army spokesperson. Thank you, spokesperson, I beg your pardon. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Osafsa Show. We hope you are exceed when next we call on you. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure having me here. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's all we have for you on this episode of the Osasu Show. We have other programs on TOS TV Network. Remember, TOS TV Network is your digital first Pan-African news network, reporting news from across the continent to the rest of the world. So here are some highlights of the other shows that we have for you on our television channel. Valiant Voices is a profile magazine show that focuses on sharing and highlighting Africa's young pace setters, makers and builders. If we look at Nigeria, statistics show that um, there's this burdening youth population. Uh, what, what does that population um, tend for us in the future? Is it, po is it positive or negative? How can we tackle that? Well, it should be positive, you know, but where we are now, uh, I think we are actually in a, in a precarious situation okay. that um, I don't think we have, all across Africa, not just in Nigeria, I don't think we are making enough investment in young people. Yeah. And in ma making the, the, the right investment means that you have to look at your education sector, you have to look at the health sector. And when I say education sector, I'm talking about giving the right kind of skill and creating the right kind of economy that speaks to those skills, you know, in symbiotic area. My Heritage is a docu-series that breaks the ice by taking viewers on a tour of the African continent. Hello, Africa and the rest of the world. This is My Heritage. I am Adesua Osui, your most dedicated guide on various breathtaking trips across the African continent, fused with history and culture. Today, I will be taking you to a place where you can surf and scuba dive in one day, dance the Samban Punana on the second, and scale a volcano on the third, all in an environment where the mercury never falls below 25 degrees Celsius. Yes, that will be Cabo Verde, or Cape Verde as many know it. <music> Please
Business Report Africa is your one-stop daily business magazine program that informs you with happenings in the business and trade world across Africa. That's it for today's program. Do follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. You can stream live some of our programs on our website www.tostvnetwork.com where you could also read news on sustainable development and current affairs across Africa. I'll see you same time, same please place next week and until then follow me on my personal social media handle at osaswigmanadian on instagram facebook and twitter take very good care of yourself remember the second wave of covid19 is deadlier than the first so keep washing your hands wearing your mask and practicing social distancing god bless you